1920, the League of Nations was founded at the end of the First World War to maintain peace and prevent war. In 1935, the first legislation to create a Department of Peace was submitted to the US Congress. In 1945, the United Nations was founded. In 2001, the UN declared the International Decade for the Culture of Peace and Nonviolence for the Children of the World from 2001 to 2010. And in 2001, the modern version of the Department of Peace legislation that you mentioned, Rajni, he's seeing a poster about was introduced in the US Congress before 9-11 um, by Representative Dennis Kucinich. And it emphasized the importance of creating a culture of peace within our own nation, as well as in dealings with other nations. In 2004, the Peace Alliance was created to focus on proactive approaches to cultivating peace and support the Department of Peace legislation. Nonviolence is described as love in action by a Meta Center in California. This is very much what a Department of Peace building is about. Um, it's about preventing violence, bringing a culture of peace, looking at the root causes of violence, and promoting the root conditions of peace. Uh, the bill is a historic and transformative piece of legislation calling for a cabinet level Department of Peace building to make peace a much, much needed national and ongoing focus in our country. It addresses the interconnection of all life and the intersectionality of peace, justice, equality, planetary survival, and other aspects of life. It is about healing and building bridges, not walls. I think I do this really for my children and to create a better world for our, our future generations. There are still a lot of people who think that violence is a natural part of being a human being, you know, especially depending on what you grew up with in your family system, your neighborhood system, what zip code you're living with in in the United States. There's a there's a different reality and cultural norm um, for all of us. And to, to really look at uh, um, new ways of thinking and relating and being in empathy with each other. One time when we were in Washington, D.C. at the Capitol building advocating for this bill, um, we, several people from the Department of Peace Building campaign happened to get in the same elevator with a group of generals. Um, so there were like maybe four of them with all their ribbons and decorations and all, you know, their military stance and all that. And then on the other side of the elevator was our group. And um, it got very quiet. <laughs> and uh, then at one point, one of the generals uh, uh, turned to our group and said, well, why are you here? And uh, nobody was sure what to say. <laughs> but then uh, somebody said, well, we're here to work for a Department of Peace building. And again, it got very quiet. And then one of the generals turned to us and said, hurry, hurry. And that, that said to me that those people, the high ranking military people understand and know what violence is. They know what it means to commit to going to war, and they know the importance of preventing that. There is progress. So it's not that we're static. There is progress with other bills passing that are important. I think this year, the conversation around uh, gun reform, common sense gun reform has shifted. More people are paying attention. Um, for me, the political system, we've got to change how we elect our people because that's a big part of it too. When we talk about the money and the propaganda, if if uh, the electorate is not educated on some of these issues and they, they buy into the propaganda, 
the elected officials are going to do what they need to do to get reelected. That's just a big part of it. 